Hello there. Welcome to another edition of, well, um, clouds in the forest, I guess, right? So um, I guess this is the, the trend now where people like to take a walk somewhere outside and talk about technology. Um, my last video that I did this, also apologies for the vertical video last time. Um, I got myself a, a, a tripod thingy so I can actually hold my phone in, in a proper orientation. So um, welcome to, um, to the forest talks or <laughs> however you like to call them about um, some AWS technology. My name is Darko and um, last time I've discussed uh, AWS cloud formation, the infrastructure as code framework on AWS. In the previous video, we talked about that, but in the video before that, we also talked about what is infrastructure as code. And today I would like to spend some time while I try not to fall in this um, in this forest. I'm actually off a beaten path here, so um, hopefully I don't, don't trip down and fall. If I do, it's gonna be fun. Um, so today I would like to talk about something else. Uh, CloudFormation's sibling or uncle. Something closely related, related to CloudFormation, but not CloudFormation. So I would like to talk about AWS Cloud Development Kit or more commonly known as AWS CDK. So <clears throat> what is AWS CDK and why is this important? Let's say you want to develop infrastructure as code. Um, you have a team of DevOps engineers, I'm sorry, uh, but folks who work in a team in a DevOps-like environment, right? And you wish to build out your infrastructure. And this team, this, uh, this group of amazing engineers is highly skilled in Python, in Java, in TypeScript, right? Why then should they opt in to do things in JSON or YAML when they can use the full language capabilities and the full, full uh, modulability of these languages and build infrastructure as code like that? Now, building infrastructure as code through Python or Java is not anything new. You could have done that. You can use the AWS SDK to build that. Perfectly fine. Um, but what's different about this, is instead of just making a bunch of API calls, why don't we just use CDK to model our infrastructure and then let something else create the things for us or let something else call the APIs for us. So what is CDK? CDK is a framework or a, well, yeah, a framework that allows you to create infrastructure as code through generic programming languages. So uh, if you do something like Python, if you do something like Java, TypeScript, JavaScript, C Sharp, F Sharp, and I believe Golang is coming sometime soon, um, why, don't you, why not use those languages to provision infrastructure? And this is what uh, CDK allows you to do. So instead of writing JSON in YAML, which don't get me wrong, CloudFormation is great. CloudFormation does that really good because, let's be honest, when you read YAML, when you read CloudFormation templates, uh, they're very clean to read. Make, they make a lot of sense when you read them. So, um, but they don't have the extensibility or the, even the reusability of CDK. So in CDK, what you can do is you can, you, you can create these things called constructs. And constructs are basically just a way to... Um, develop certain parts of your infrastructure, right? They're already built in constructs, they're built in patterns. Um, there's a whole construct library that you can use to build specific things on CDK. So I, again, I will be throwing up pictures of code images somewhere around me. Of course, I don't have those things in the forest, but hey, that's what the video editing is for. Um, so when you do this, these things in CloudFormation, you basically write a template or a bunch of templates and they do that. Um, there are no things such as loops or basically plugging in different templates or creating resources just as modules. It's very difficult to do that in CloudFormation. Um, but doing that in, in CDK is much easier. Actually, it's quite possible and that's basically the whole point. So on top of that, because this uses a generic programming language, you can actually use all the best practices when it comes to software delivery. So testing frameworks, for like, a, for example, you can use the JavaScript Jest for a testing framework to actually um, 
test your uh, CDK code. Oh my God, I stepped in some water. It's, <laughs> it's humid this time of year. Um, so yeah, I stepped into some deep moss. So <clears throat> you could actually use the, those, those frameworks to test your CDK code. But let's actually have a look through some CDK code. Now, CDK code can be written in multiple languages, as I said. It's different depending which language you use, but um, it is pretty similar at a high, higher level. So um, I've actually started with TypeScript and I'm, I, 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 most use cases you will, you, will, you will start with TypeScript because currently there's more examples in TypeScript than any other, other language. So that's why I started it. It's not the best language. It doesn't really matter which language you use. Everything is supported in all the languages um, that are supported. And um, uh, basically, this is let, let's, let's actually try to have a look at how, uh, how a, a project on, cloud, on CDK looks like. Now, I'm going to try to imagine this in my head, and I will fulfill this with uh, images of code somewhere. So, first thing you need to do create a, to create a CDK project is to run CDK init. Uh, dash dash language equals TypeScript, right? Or whichever language you wish to use on CDK. That will actually... Uh, first of all, you have to have CDK installed. CDK on the CloudFormation requires its own tool. There's a command line utility for CDK. And um, you just install it with NPM. So NPM install AWS-CDK. So once you do that, you have the CDK command line utility installed. You run CDK init, dash dash, language equals whatever language you want to use. So TypeScript. This will actually generate the entire folder structure all the files, it will actually install all the packages, especially when using NPM. It will set up all the packages and there's a helicopter somewhere around. It will install all the packages you need. Um, if you're using Python, it's gonna set up a virtual environment and a whole bunch of other things. So it, it, it takes care of the scaffolding for you. So, give it a second. Is that, uh, what is that? It's the German government, apparently. It's the German, German government helicopter. Wow. Okay, so uh, you uh, set up these, um, it basically creates the scaffolding for you and you have all the files you need to start working on it. When you do TypeScript, two important files. There's a file in the bin directory. This is where you define your application. So um, this is where you create, uh, this is where your application is defined and within that application, you, you can define multiple stacks. If you remember how CloudFormation had a single stack from a single template, similar here but you can actually provision multiple stacks per application and they can be all created through multiple stack <coughs> stack modules and whatnot right so you create this thing which is um a, a, an application file basically where you define your application where you define your stacks you can define some environment variables and a whole bunch of different things once you have that done you can go into your lib directory and this is where your starter module is or your construct this is where you write your code. Now you have only one here right now, but you can have any number of these modules inside and you can just modularly use them within your stack, right? You don't have to put all of your code in a single text file and just do it all from there. You can actually um, mix and match. So let's have a look how this looks. Uh, how does this look like? We have a bunch of imports. So especially when you do things in TypeScript and Python, you import modules you have to install those modules separately for every specific service. The same thing as like you use AWS SDK, you will use specific imports for specific SDK elements. Uh, you import all these things. For example, you import the EC2, Lambda, API Gateway, whatever. Um, then you can start writing your code. And basically to write your code, you start with a, a variable. Now you should define a variable if you will be using that thing down the line. So for example, let's create a VPC. We will do const my VPC. Const says, hey, this is my variable. This is the variable I'm gonna be using for my VPC object. And later on in the, in the template, I can actually reuse that variable and uh, apply it to different things that require a VPC. So const uh, my VPC equals new, we're creating a new object. Then because we have imported EC2, right? Uh, the object EC2 as EC2, or actually the module EC2 as EC2. Then we go ahead and uh, type new EC2 dot VPC, and then we open a bracket. In that bracket, we write this. Basically, we're defining which context we're creating this in, which is in this one. 
and we're giving it a logical name. So the logical name can be my lovely CDK VPC, whatever. And then the only thing we need to define is, well, actually nothing. We can do that and it will just create a blank, well, it will create a, a VPC on its own. We can define like some things like the CIDR range. We can define things like a whole lot of things, right? But let's actually define a CIDR, CIDR range, range as a property. So I put a comma at CIDR equals 10.0.0.0 slash 16. We will use that CIDR range, close off all the brackets, do all of that, save it. We have created a resource in AWS CDK. Not yet. Once we save all, all of that, we exit the text editor and we do CDK deploy. Well, actually, no. If this is the first time you're running CDK, you have to run CDK bootstrap which will just bootstrap your account with all the necessary S3 buckets, everything that CDK needs to kind of work with your account, uh, account and region. So <clears throat> once we do that, we run CDK deploy. CDK deploy basically synthesizes this code into, you guessed it, CloudFormation. So CDK uses CloudFormation at the end. So it takes this TypeScript code, converts it to CloudFormation with a lot of, uh, sensible um, defaults, right? Creates this CloudFormation template and actually passes it on to CloudFormation and lets CloudFormation deploy the stuff for you. So this is great because we didn't have to reinvent the wheel when it comes to CDK to have CDK manage your resources and CDK deploy them and CDK do all of these things. We use CloudFormation, which is a perfectly good service to create and manage those resources. CDK just takes the effort of the writing complex uh, CloudFormation templates and just allows you to do them in a lovely uh, TypeScript or Java or Python or whatever language you want to use. So yeah, that's what um, what CDK do. Once we do CDK deploy, it potentially will ask us if we're creating some IAM resources. Like, are you sure you wish to create this? You say yes, and then if you do, and then it just goes away to CloudFormation. And if you go to your CloudFormation console, you will actually be seeing your uh, CloudFormation template being launched with the resources you have launched. Now, the difference between creating a VPC in, in, in vanilla CloudFormation and a VPC in CDK is that CDK does a lot of defaults for you. So for example, if you just create a blank VPC on CloudFormation, it will create a blank VPC, nothing else, just a VPC, no subnets, no gateways, no routes, nothing. If you do it in, in CDK, CDK actually at the time of this recording will create four subnets, two public, to private, it will create all the gateways. It will actually create a NAT gateways for you as well for those private private subnets, and it will give your your um, CloudFormation or actually your your stack all the bells and whistles that you need for a proper VPC to function. Now you can change all of these things, of course, but uh, the default values are quite nice and quite easy to get into. If you ever had to write a CloudFormation template to create a VPC. It takes like 75 lines of YAML or JSON to create a proper VPC with at least a bunch of subnets. This does it in a single line. I love that. So yeah, uh, that would be kind of a, a really short introduction into what is CDK. Now again, I, I can go ahead and talk about more details, what is CDK and how does it work. But um, I think there's a lot of videos on my YouTube channel that you can check me working with CDK and um, uh, also, my, my friend Kobus and I do a lot of streaming a lot online that we do a lot of CDK as well. So um, you can get that information there as well. In any way, in any case, um, hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed this another uh, walk through the forest with me. This time I picked a different part of the forest. So there's a, some pine trees as well. But I do believe this is the, the last chance because all the leaves are going to go away. And um, well, there is a pine forest there. So I might, I might use a pine forest the next time. Um, let me know if this is good. Let me know if this uh, makes sense, if this kind of video is interesting to watch. Because um, I find it relaxing and I find that I can actually focus on some technology while I just randomly, aimlessly walk around the, the forest in Berlin. Um, thank you very much. My name has been Darko Mesrosh and uh, I will be seeing you some other time. Bye bye.